Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about criticality. What is criticality? To answer that, we need to look inside an atom, but not just any kind of atoms. A fissile isotope. Quick refresher. Isotopes define the numbers of neutrons versus the number of protons inside the nucleus of an atom. Now, looking down a periodic table, we have heavy elements such as plutonium-239, which has 94 protons and 145 neutrons. These neutrons, via the strong nuclear force, keep those protons from flying apart, like a drunk schoolgirl's t-shirts on spring break. So the strong nuclear force is there to keep their peace and maintain order inside the nucleus, up to a point. Because the strong nuclear force only has a short reaching range, versus the, the electrical repulsion exerted by the protons has a far reaching action. Most isotopes are stable, some radioactive. Other isotopes, like these guys, do something else. These isotopes are called fissile material. Nuclear fission happens when these particular isotopes absorb an extra neutron. The nucleus work apart, releasing energy, highly excited isotopes, and extra neutrons. And here's the key. If we want to have a chain reaction, we need to have those extra neutrons go away and start a chain reaction. Because one fission happening on its own somewhere is just as useful as a payphone in high school. Now, once the chain reaction starts, three things can happen. The reaction dies because the neutrons are not absorbed by other fissile acids. The reaction is barely sustained, like in a nuclear reactor. Or the reaction is exponential, like in an atomic bomb. If we just want to get energy out of it, we need to sustain the nuclear reaction and by making sure that at least one neutron generated is going to start another fission reaction. There are seven factors to keep a nuclear chain reaction going. You know, mass, enrichment, absorption, moderation, geometry, separation, and reflection. Now, the mass. Enough atom must be present in the first place to allow the reaction to be sustained and continue. This minimum mass is called the critical mass. All fissile isotopes have a different critical mass, depending on the concentration of the fissile material being used. The enrichment, probability of a neutron hitting another fissile isotope, if too many non-fissile nucleus are in the way, they're going to absorb the neutrons and the chain reaction will die out. Therefore, no criticality can occur. 3. Absorb or neutron poison. Some isotopes, like cadmium, gadolinium and boron are very good absorbing neutrons. So if they're present within the fissile material and other fissile isotopes, they act at new, as neutron poison and kill the reaction. Moderation. As a general rule, slow neutrons called thermal are better being captured than fast neutrons. So a moderator is a substance that will slow down neutrons, allow it to be captured by a fissile isotope. Substances like water are very good at slowing down neutrons. The geometry or shape of the fissile material is also very important. A sphere is the best way to, to get a nuclear chain reaction from becoming exponential. Hence, the core of an atomic bomb is usually in the shape of a sphere. A rectangle, on the other hand, allows many neutrons to leave the reacting region and be lost to the surrounding unable to sustain a chain reaction. Reflection. In nuclear weapon design, this is called a temper. It reflects back to the fissile material escaping neutrons. Separation. If two subcritical masses are stored too close to each other, some neutrons can leak from one and trigger a chain reaction in the other, effectively, effectively creating a positive feedback. All these factors must be considered when handling large quantities of fissile material. It is vital to prevent such chain reaction from taking place in order to protect life and property. And that's what criticality is, dealing with all these factors to make sure no nuclear chain reaction can take place when it's not wanted. Now, since the 1940s and the beginning of the atomic era, there has, no been, there has not been any nuclear explosion due to critical accidents. However, a considerable amount of radiation in the form of X-ray, gamma, and neutrons is being emitted during a criticality accident. And anyone standing nearby will likely receive a lethal dose of radiation. The air around the criticality accident is glowing in electric blue. This is not due to the Cherenkov effect. Instead, the electrons of oxygen and nitrogen atoms being knocked out of their orbits are recombining and emitting blue visible photons. It's merely a coincidence that Cherenkov effect has the same color. Victims report a feeling of heat as their chromosomes are being destroyed after an, an intense irradiation, such as being in close proximity of a chain reaction, the body effectively falls apart. DNA is unable to repair itself and the extensive damage. As the cells of our body dies, a gruesome death awaits, usually between a few hours up to a few months, depending on the dose received. And these critical events only happen for a few seconds most of the time, as the material heats up, expands, creating more space and stopping the reaction, allowing more neutrons to escape. No nuclear criticality subject should be treated without a quick look at the demon's core. The demon's core was a sphere of about 6.2 kilograms in mass, 
or roughly 14 pounds of the, the alloy gallium plutonium. Now, since plutonium corroded readily in air, it was coated with a thin layer of nickel, 9 centimeters in diameter, or 3.5 inches, although subcritical on its own, it was only 5% shy of being critical. So messing with this thing, you had a very low margin of error, 5%. It was involved in two critical accidents in 1945 and 1946 that resulted in the death of the scientists working on it at the time. Originally supposed to have been used in the atomic bomb for the Baker test, it was too radioactive to be approached after the second accident and was therefore melted. On August 21, 1945, Harry Daglin received a fatal dose of about 200 rad of neutron and gamma radiations after dropping a brick of neutron reflectors onto the core. He died 25 days later from acute radiation poison. He was 24 years old. This happened again on May 21st, 1946. Louis Sludding was working while holding a half sphere of neutron reflectors over the core. Accidentally dropped a sphere of reflective material onto the core. The core went again critical for only a half a second which was enough to deliver a lethal dose of a thousand rad, or estimated, to the 35-year-old scientist who died nine days after the accident. After what, the core was too radioactive to be handled and was subsequently melted. An impressive case happened on July 23, 1964. A solution of uranium carbonate went critical when stirred by 37-year-old operator Peabody. He received an estimated dose, dose of an impressive 10,000 rad and died 49 hours after the accident. As of January 2017, the last critical accident reported happened in, in September 1999, when a solution of uranium, uranium nitrate went critical, exposing two technicians to a lethal dose of upward of a thousand rad. Neither of them survived. These were just a few examples of what we're dealing with. There's an official 21 death in 10 separate accidents of criticality. Messing around with these isotopes used to be called Tickling the dragon tail. Hey, thanks for watching.